After the attack on Pearl Harbor, aluminum was in short supply as it was needed to produce aircraft to fight the Japanese in the Pacific. Now, American military canteens have been produced in aluminum since before World War I, and a program was drawn up to help try to identify a suitable replacement to these aluminum canteens. Now, there were three main designs that were considered to replace the aluminum canteen. A plastic ethocell canteen, the enameled canteen, and then a stainless steel canteen. Now, the main problem with these canteens was that the enamel coating was extremely prone to chipping away. Now when this happened, the low-grade steel underneath would be exposed, which would cause it to rust. An even more important issue was that if the canteen was hit hard enough, the enamel on the inside would also chip away. Now this enamel is basically glass, and this would be extremely dangerous for the soldier to ingest. Here you can see examples of that chipping on this canteen. Now in normal canteens, the manufacturer's information was stamped into the bottom, but because these were coated in enamel, it had to be inked on instead. In total, about six manufacturers created these canteens, and they made about five million of them. Now, the six manufacturers were Volrath, U.S. Stoneware Company, Bel Air Enameling, Republic Stamping and Enameling, Fletcher Enameling, and Strong Manufacturing. Now, if we look at the markings on the bottom of this canteen, you can see a U.S. property mark, REP, and then the partially worn away date of 1942. Now the REP stands for Republic Stamping and Enameling, so they would have been the manufacturer of this particular canteen. Now you may be wondering what became of the other two designs. Well the Ethocell canteen continued to be produced through 1944, but was equally disliked by soldiers. Now you have to remember that plastic technology was in its infancy in the 40s, and these canteens had a tendency to leach flavors and other chemicals into the water that gave it a bad taste. Now the clear winner out of all these canteens was the stainless steel canteen. This had none of the drawbacks that the other two did, and continued to be produced until the end of the war. Even though these canteens were disliked by soldiers during the war, they are prized by collectors today. There's even a variant that was coated in blue enamel that is extremely sought after. Canteen cups were also produced with an enamel coating on them that are even more rare and valuable than the canteens themselves.